In this video, I will be looking at a gold rank Killjoy on Icebox and go in depth as to what they can do to specifically improve and climb fast and ranked. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is CurryShot and I've been a professional coach in esports for the last decade. I post frequent VOD reviews to help elevate your gameplay, so consider subscribing, it's free. Let's begin. So let's go ahead and start the VOD and look at the first round and look at the Killjoy setups. You don't need any crazy specific Killjoy setups to really climb in rank, but I'm going to teach you how to eyeball them and I'm going to give you the thought process as to like how you should play around your util. So first things first, this Killjoy decides to put their turret in kitchen, which is completely fine. So the reason Killjoy was like so like so good in, in pro play, for instance, before you know the chamber meta came out and chamber like was able to be picked, um, basically her turret could watch three angles at once when it's put on this counter in kitchen, right? It can watch uh, the kitchen window like under tube it can watch top tube as well and it can watch kitchen right so it watches three things at once and allows killjoy to be like on orange area this like near site on b and she can play like around screens as well she can play boiler even she can be like multiple places at once and kind of assist in all directions right so that's why that's very good but i want to talk about the alarm alarm bot usage too if you want to go for the setup basically like you're you're kind of like focusing your setup around mid which is completely fine i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward but I want to talk about this. The reason why Killjoy was picked before Chamber 2 was because it was used to really like counter this Viper Lurk Orb in mid. So if you didn't know, basically the turret is watching Kitchen, right? So the additional thing about this was that Killjoy would wait for this Lurk Orb to go up and then she'd put her Alarm Bot in there. So the reason she'd put the, her Alarm Bot in there is because unlike Chamber's Trap, it goes invisible after a few seconds when it's placed. So in case they try to Lurk through this Viper Orb, you'll know because the alarm bot will go off. It's in the orb and they don't really like get to break it unless they like expect it later on. So that's like really important. So now that we've talked about mid setup, let's go ahead and talk about your A setup, your B setup and how to use molly since we've covered alarm bot and turret. So as Killjoy, you really want to be swinging off your utils. So let's say you want to go ahead and go for an A setup. Again, you don't need crazy setups, but one thing you could do is put your turret on top of screens, right? And then you could put mollies on front gen and default. And the other thing is, if they have a sage, you always have to consider them wall planting. That's the whole point of sage on Icebox. So you could put a molly a little bit further up to deny like their wall plant. That way you have time to break the wall, right? Um, you don't necessarily have to like kill them with your molly. You just have to stop the plant, delay so you can break the wall. So then their plant isn't safe. So that's the strategy around it. And then at the same time, if they don't have a sage or they're not walling or something like that and they're choosing to fight, uh, you want to like really think about your positioning. Again, you want to swing off your utils. So if your turret is top screens where this raise is standing on the minimap right now, you can play like back sight. And then if they opt out to go ahead and break this turret, you'll know they'll be looking at the turret, right? They'll be looking at the other side. So you can swing from back side, pop a molly as well. And then they're moving. So their first shot accuracy shouldn't be accurate, but you know how Valorant is sometimes. Sometimes you can full running shoot but it shouldn't be accurate or they'll have their back turned to you or your, their side turned to you because they're shooting your turret so you really want to like make sure that you're capitalizing on the windows sentinel and killjoy specifically isn't just hide and let your utility do all the work you just get timings off the alerts of it going off and that you have to really capitalize on those timings and swing off of it so that's really important for a right and on b it's kind of a similar similar thing where like let's say they do end up going b you could do the mid setup again and then you could just put a molly on like on this like default plant spot in case they try and sage wall and then plant and again just break the wall um the molly stalls off the plant and then they have to like really consider like oh they just broke the wall um this is plant might not be safe and then again it buys time for your team to rotate over and you can like really delay the plant and work off of that so that's how you want to th be thinking about your mollies and that's how you want to be thinking about your setups and how to play off your killjoy util so i'm gonna go ahead and look at the round after pistol when they lost and i want to talk about generally something that's not killjoy specific but it's just good to know anyway and that is eco rounds what to do on eco rounds because i always see in like lesser experience ratings people just kind of still defaulting on eco rounds and that's not really a good thing to do because you don't want to end up retaking with classics frenzies and those type of guns because it's going to be a very hard fight to win especially at range right uh in the post line maybe they play range and it's, it's going to be very hard to do that right so in in that case right what you want to do is you either try and make an aggressive play again because you have nothing to lose or you try and like a stack a site and play off your util that way so like four stacking a site or in some cases some people like to leave the sentinel solo on one side and four stack the other and you kind of just play around with that just so so that you have something to do and like you can catch them off guard get some guns and that way 
one, you just get guns, so their bonus round um, might be like a little bit less valuable. And the other thing is, you might even win the round as you get their guns yourself if you catch them off guard and they have to cancel or rotate off or anything like that, right? So that's very important. So I'm gonna go ahead and play out the round to see what happens here to apply like what I just said and show you like where this could have like had much like a lot of value, right? So as we're gonna go ahead and see here, uh, the Killjoy opted out to buy a Frenzy, which again, now they're gonna have to fight at range with a Frenzy, which is not a good feeling. There's gonna be a lot of fall off damage. And on top of it, let's say they did end up eco pushing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and play out the round. Most people should know that they don't really want to lurk in case like an eco push does happen. For instance, in this case, let's go ahead and play out the round. Chamber is lurking in mid by himself. And let's say the team decided to eco push mid and he's caught there in mid, right? And he doesn't have his TP set up or something like that. Then they can potentially like he might kill one or two and then the defending team might get one in return and they get a specter off of that, right? So they get a gun out of it and the round suddenly becomes somewhat winnable, right? So it's very important to note that in this case, if they did apply, hey, we're going to eco push mid or something like that, right? Then they could have gotten a gun since the chamber did make a mistake. So I'm going to keep playing out the round though, because I, I want to just show you again that how tough it is to go ahead and play retake with these guns. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, the enemy team ends up hitting A, hard hitting A, so they're not stacked here on A. But now this Killjoy is forced to take a gunfight at this range with a frenzy and that is a very disadvantageous position to be in right because now there's gonna be a lot of fall off damage the recoil is kind of insane at this range with the frenzy it's really hard to use right so this is like the situation you don't want to be in so I'm going to go ahead and condense information here to give you context as to what's happening in this game. In this Killjoy's game, the enemy team is just pressuring mid a lot on their attack and they're losing through like them walking up tube and breaking her turret in kitchen and then just killing people from kitchen, uh, walking up mid, etc. Right? So I want to kind of just bring this back to the first point I made in the video about the mid setup because it's super, super imperative for success on Killjoy. Okay, so let's go ahead and play out the video here. So as you can see, the Killjoy setup right now is still the turret and kitchen and the alarm bot is on this like B side of tube, like towards the B side, right? So it's not in the Viper orb like I stated, it should be. So as a result of this, the entirety of mid is not covered, right? They can still walk through the orb and go through mid. So you'll see them actually punish the Sage here and they don't have the information that someone just walked through mid like that, right? They, they know that mid is open, so it's really important to go ahead and make that adjustment to your setup. Because later on in the VOD 2, you might see that the Killjoy says, oh, I'll just put my turret up here on boiler. But still, as if you do that, then um, you won't have the information for kitchen, right? You might have to use an alarm bot in kitchen instead. But then if you put your alarm bot in kitchen and your turret in boiler, then you don't have any information for under tube, right? They can walk in through under tube. So there's always going to be holes in your defense. So you have to make these optimizations to make sure there are no holes in your defense. And you always have the information. So now that we talked about defense for Killjoy, I want to make this as short as possible for attack because I think it's really important to go ahead and talk about the playstyle that Killjoy needs to have on attack. And that is not to just stick with her team all the time because if you're just 5-manning all the time, there is no pressure on the map elsewhere. That means they can literally full-on sprint, as you will see in this VOD, through B, through mid, and just fast flank and get flanks before the bomb even goes down right because there's no pressure there you can't just like hope your turret does all the work scares them off and that they don't flank and then play off your alarm bot right you want to make sure that you're contesting it with your body as well so initially you could do that but if you know that they're just fast flanking you want to kind of condition them and what i mean by that is you want to try and play like really ratty spots so you can hide here hide here hide in tube hide in like B garage and try and like catch them off guard if they're just thinking about fast flanking. That way you have pressure on the map so they can't do that every round without any repercussions. They always have to consider that you might still be doing that and it slows them down and make sure that your team's pace matches that of like actually getting the bomb down and then it forces them into a timer since you know bomb is going to explode. So it's very important that you're taking this lurking role as well as this kind of map control role on attack with Sentinel since that's how you provide value for your team. Not only that, but if you think about the role of a lurker, a lurker should always use their team. They should not be the first people to go. They should always use their team. And then since all the attention is on the team like who's hitting A, they can go ahead and try and make their play then. So that way you're alive longer so they get more use out of your utility for the flank, right? And then again, if you get the information that they're flanking, you can contest it from uh, angles that they may or may not clear. 
So very important to note that, and that's how you should play Killjoy. So I'm going to go ahead and play the VOD now and show you like what this person did wrong. They're always staying with their team here, and this is kind of like a really weird turret. I understand that they were breaking the one on the barrels uh, really quickly, but... The one with the barrel, the, the problem with the turret on the barrels is that it can go offline uh, once you get to pipes, after pipes. That's the range of the turret. Once you get past pipes near like the 410 area on Icebox A, the turret goes offline. So like it kind of restricts you in that case. But at the same time, this turret's not really that great. So let's go ahead and play out the video here. And you'll see that the team is still 5 manning. They're going through A. And now they break the turret right now. Uh, they end up breaking the Killjoy turret on flank. And then this Killjoy, instead of fighting the flank or fighting in the front side of A, they decide to put an alarm bot and just kind of play passive. And that is that is wrong because you don't know how many people are flanking. You don't know... Uh, and it's very important to know how many people are flanking. That might not seem like that important, but the reason why it's important is that uh, if you have three people flanking, right, that means there can only be two people in screens or rafters. So if you fight the people in screen or rafters and let's say a 5v2 and you get the trades, then you flip the map and then there's no pressure from getting flanked, right? Because they can't be flanking you now because you have control of their CT basically. So very important to note that. So now let's go ahead and play out this round. You'll see that the fade goes and tries and deals with the flank. And then Killjoy is not watching anything really. Like he's looking at a wall, he puts a molly on the bomb, and then he's like, oh, I'll just watch rafters from this weird angle, which doesn't really help. And then the Fade ends up dying to the chamber on the flank. Chamber kills another one, and now there's one rafters as well. It's a really, really weird angle, so not really favorable. They have the high ground, um, and once they have peekers with high ground, it's going to be hard to win that uh, peekers advantage. So as a result of this, Two people kill three people from the flank, and now they have no control. And now whoever's left on site is pinched. So you can't play time if they flank this fast. That's why it's so important, again, to make sure to, like, condition them to make sure they can't just, like, full-on sprint and flank you this fast. So, yeah, don't five-man with Killjoy. Make sure that you're uh, lurking as well. Uh, you can five-man sometimes with ultimates and stuff like that, but you have to be unpredictable. So that's what I feel this Killjoy player needs to do better when I was watching this VOD, and those are like the few things that I noticed. It's more about setups, more about micro and understanding the agent and your role as Sentinel, and then as well as just positioning and overall like use, right? So I think like ultimates weren't really covered in this video, but it, they weren't really relevant. I didn't talk about crosshair placement too much either, but these are the things that I think could elevate this person's gameplay to maybe hit plat. It's just understanding the role better and improving their game sense in this regard. So if you did like this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you do want your VOD reviewed, leave your Discord tag in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.